good, Brother Roberson. Always good to see you. And church family, there's so much going on that you don't want to miss right here on the avenue. For example, on April 25th, we'll have our Bible boot camp hosted by our young adult ministry. Or our Prime of Life Ignite and 60 worship experience and conclave on April the 27th. And so much more. I'm Brian Q. Roberson II. And I'm Andre Kahn Jr. And this is your Avenue News. News. Church family, get ready for an exhilarating month ahead as we celebrate our journey from the establishment of our church in 1962 to reaching the remarkable milestone of 62 years on June 2nd. We have a calendar full of activities planned throughout the month of May, so stay tuned. You don't want to miss it. This year, we are excited to introduce a special commemorative Wheeler baseball style jersey that our entire family will proudly wear. These jerseys will showcase your last name on the back along with the year you became a part of the Wheeler Avenue family. With three unique design options available, be sure to secure yours today. These limited edition jerseys will only be available for a short time to ensure timely delivery. Don't miss out. Purchase your jersey from the church website now. The deadline for orders is April 26th. Have you struggled with infertility, endometriosis, or pregnancy loss? Are you interested in exploring your pathway to parenthood? Join the waiting room ministry on Monday, April 22nd at 7 p.m. to hear from experts in gynecology, reproductive endocrinology, adoption, mental health, and so much more. Visit wheelerbc.org for all of the details and to register. We hope to see you there. The Prime of Life ministry will host its first Ignite and 60 worship experience on Saturday, April 27th at 10 a.m. All are invited to join in worship as Prime of Lifers submit to God's sovereign will, dedicating the ministry unto the Lord. Following this 60-minute power-packed experience, Prime adults are encouraged to remain for Conclave, where individuals will have an opportunity to fellowship and plan ministry opportunities for the remainder of the church year. For Conclave participation, please register by visiting the events page on the church website. The Evangelism Ministry invites you to join with us for an exciting intergenerational journey on the Avenue of Hope on Saturday, April 27th from 10 a.m. until 12.30 p.m. Come learn, participate, and grow with us to become more effective, dedicated disciple makers. Church family, this is a very important year. As the community is concerned about the leadership of our nation, we are gathering for a National Day of Prayer to begin praying about the upcoming elections. You can participate in an evening of prayer with local public servants and citizens as we ask God to heal our land and give us good leaders. Join us Thursday, May 2nd at 7 p.m. in the sanctuary as we pray. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and Dr. Barbara Williams will be joined by Dr. Judy Burfitt, Reverend Lana Reese, Dr. Dorothy Moore, and Ms. Jada Washington to provide information and valuable tips on navigating your mental health. Attention church family, Lewis Language Services is bringing Spanish class on campus for the first time since 2019. The Spanish One Summer Hybrid class will begin Saturday, May 11th from 10 a.m. to noon. For more information or to register, contact Mr. Lewis at 713-829-0032. Join the Health, Wellness, and Recreation Ministry for the spring edition of our 5K Fun Run or Walk and Bike Ride. This event will offer a 5K walk or run in conjunction with a 5K Family Novice Bike Ride and a 40K Advanced Bike Ride. Online registration ends on May 11th. For more information, visit our church website. It's almost time for Wednesdays in the Word. Join us each Wednesday in the month of May at 7 p.m. as we hear the Word of God from dynamic preachers from across the nation. Make plans to join us for our Spring Arts Festival, scheduled to take place on Saturday, May 4th, from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. This vibrant event will be hosted on the campus of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church and aims to illuminate, inspire, and enrich lives through the diverse expression of the arts. Here's what you can expect. Food, fun, family-friendly activities, a kid's zone, poetry, culinary arts demonstrations, fashion, literary art displays, visual art exhibits, and so much more. We're also very excited to announce that the Walls Group will be joining us as our special guests. 
If you're interested in being a vendor at the festival, we do have 32 slots available today. For more information and how to become a vendor, please reach out to us at Spring Arts Festival at wheelerbc.org. Can't wait to see you there. There's so much taking place, and we hope you get connected. For more information, follow us on Flocknote, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, or you can check out our church app. I'm Andre Kahn Jr. And I'm Brian Keith Roberson II. And this has been your Avenue News. And remember, we are Wheeler wherever. Good morning, church family. And this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Will you please join me in celebrating, celebrating our wonderful God on this morning? As per usual, will you please help me thank the Lord for the ministry in motion praise dancers as they come and bless us on this morning.
great God that we can go to in prayer. We're so grateful to him. There are a number of names that you will see scrolling on the screens today that require and desire our prayers throughout this week. We pray now that you would cover those names as um, you go throughout your week. But we have a special privilege today, and we've been tasked with covering our founding pastor in prayer. We don't take for granted these latter years of his life. We give God all praise, honor, and glory. There are no services this week that we need to cover. Hallelujah. So I invite you now to take your chosen prayer posture as we go to the Lord in prayer but I ask that you would also lift up our founding pastor uh, as you do pray. Amen? Let us pray. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, O oh God. 
you're a wonder-working God, powerful and almighty in all your ways, O oh God. We give you praise, honor, and glory because we can come to you in our time of need knowing that you meet and answer every prayer. Oh God, it may not come the way we desire or the way we expect it, but oh God, we thank you that you don't miss out on anything. There are no surprises to you, oh God. So we come today lifting up a variety of prayer concerns, but we want to focus our attention on our founder today. God, we come lifting in prayer the one who has visited and prayed for us and so many others. Thank you for the testimony of his life through his presence with us here today. Oh God, we thank you. We don't take for granted that it is a push for him and for those that care for him to get him here with us every time he's able. We honor him and we honor his quiet praise when his hands raise toward you, oh God. Our hearts are uplifted and we are made better as a result of his presence. Thank you for the life and the legacy, the work and the witness of Pastor William Alexander Lawson. Oh God, in these winter years of his life, his body is weakened but we know your strength is made perfect in our weakness. You made him and you know all about him. You are the great physician and the healer. Jehovah Rapha is your name, oh God. Please uphold him by your righteous right hand, oh God. Oh God, we thank you for his daughters, Melanie, Cheryl, and Roxanne. Give them your peace, which surpasses human wisdom or understanding. Guard their hearts and minds as they support their father. Bless his beloved grandchildren and great-grandchildren and caregivers. God, we thank you, Lord, that you continue to bring him our way each and every week. And even in those days when he can't be here, God, we thank you that his presence still permeates as part of this church family. While we love and honor him as our founding pastor, we thank you for, his, for positioning him as Houston's pastor and for the impact of his life in this community. Oh, his work and his witness go throughout this community as a lover of humanity and for the other. That we may try and in, in our feebleness disregard, oh God, but you taught us to not look at uh, what we see on the outside. But we thank you, oh God, that you look at the heart and we thank you that you gave a servant to us to Build this church, oh God, and direct this church. We stand on his shoulders, oh God. We thank you that you gave Pastor Lawson the insight to prepare this congregation for his successor. Seeking out and through your divine hand, you brought our senior pastor, Dr. Marcus D. Cosby, to this place. We thank you for the work that they've done together, oh God, shining a light on how one should treat the other, oh God that the incoming pastor should not look down on the outgoing, and the outgoing should not seek to outshine the incoming, oh God. We give you praise and don't take for granted even in that, that you've thought enough of us to give us two shepherds after your own heart. We thank you and praise you for the work and witness of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church as a result of these two great men. And oh God, we pray that we as this third ward community church known as wheeler would not be hidden by pointing but rather pointing others to a dying world pointing this dying world to you oh god ultimately oh god we thank you for your power in this place bless everything that goes forth today lord under this feeble prayer oh god i pray that you get all the glory all the honor and all of the praise for the great God that you are, for the great things that you've done. And we look forward to the great things that you will do. It is in the mighty, the majestic, the marvelous, the miraculous name of Jesus the Christ that I do uplift this prayer with thanksgiving and with expectation. Amen. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from where 
everything you need. Oh, yes, it does. It's all right to bless him. The gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. We're reading the 16th through the 34th verses in the New International Version. And the word of God reads, as Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me. Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he had taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in, the, in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, what do you want with us? Jesus of Nazareth, have you come to destroy us? I know who you are the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, what is this, a new teaching? And with authority, he even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening, after sunset, 
The people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon possessed. The whole town gathered at the door and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Please remain standing for our hymn, Because He Lives. Life is worth the living just, just because he lives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's sing it together. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love.
Jesus on this Lord's Day. Why don't you give great praise to our great God who is worthy to be praised. This is the day that the Lord has made. We've come to rejoice and be glad in it. What a joy it is to greet you, my sisters, my brothers, on this Lord's Day. I am delighted to welcome special guests who are with us. On behalf of our senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby, and the man whom we must celebrate every chance we get, our founding pastor emeritus, the Reverend William Alexander Lawson. It is upon his shoulders that we stand, and we thank God for the presence of the Pope's Pope. Amen. God be praised for you, sir. Listen, on their behalf, indeed on behalf of the entire congregation, I want to welcome all of our first-time visitors. If that's your reality, would you stand so that we might honor your presence among us? Any first-time visitors, would you stand? We want to thank God for you on this Sunday. <laughs> to God be the glory. Church family, help me thank God for all of these first-time visitors. Listen, to each of you who stands as first-time guests, on behalf of these distinguished gentlemen and the entire congregation, allow for me to express to each of you just how excited we are that you've opted to worship with us on this Lord's Day. We are clear that you had options as to where you would spend this day in worship, so we neither take it lightly nor for granted that you are here among us. If you have a church home, please take back our warmest greetings and regards. Let your church family, let your pastor know that we were excited about your presence among us on this Sunday. However, if you do not have a church home, our prayer is that you would truly be blessed by the entirety of this experience of worship we want for you to make yourselves at home for we would love to call you our brothers our sisters and this family of faith this body of believers here at Wheeler Avenue whatever your reality is we just thank God that you're here and we can prove to you how excited we are about your presence church family help me one more time thank God for all of our first time friends we likewise thank God for each of you who worships with us virtually. We are Wheeler wherever. So wherever you are around this, our God's, you may be, you may be seated. You may be seated. God bless you. Wherever you are around this, our God's globe, it is our joy to welcome you even virtually into this experience of worship. And we pray that you are being blessed and will be blessed as a consequence of our time shared in worship one with another. If it's your first time and you're on YouTube or Facebook, there are chats that are enabled and you can let us know your brothers and sisters in those chats pardon me, who would love to greet you with the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this Sunday. But we thank God for you one and all. We want to acknowledge the presence of Lauren Ashley Simmons, who is running for Democrat for State Representative 146 position. Would you stand? We want to honor your presence among us. She, of course, is in a runoff election, and that runoff election will be on uh, Tuesday, May 28th, and you can vote early between the 20th and the 24th. It is election season even now. The special election uh, early voting begins tomorrow, and we want to be mindful of that election, and then on May 4th as well. We likewise want to, of course, thank God for these peewee praisers who are behind me. Help me honor their presence, would you? Listen, today they're wearing a very special uniform, and we want to acknowledge that uh, this is Autism Awareness Month, and one of our, our, our children, amen, one of our children has a company and designed these shirts. One of our children who, is, who is, has autism uh, designed these shirts, and we thank God for the genius of our very own children here at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. And we thank God for Brother J.C. on. Listen, celebrate these children, would you, as they come to honor us and worship our God.
Hallelujah. Won't you put your hands together? Help us to bless the Lord. Come on.
Good Sunday morning to you, my brothers and sisters. It is with the joy of the Lord that I greet you on this day, the middle of the month of April, as we continue to celebrate the great things that our God has done, is doing, and even plans to do in the life and work of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. I'm grateful to each of you who has made your way to the Wheeler Avenue Church today. Those of you who are viewing from across the country and even around the world, thank you so much for choosing Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church as your place of worship for this Lord's Day. Listen, there are many things that are happening in Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, and I regret that I'm not with you today. But while I'm away from you, please know that I solicit your prayers as I share with the Abyssinia Baptist Church of Jacksonville, Florida, uh, where they today celebrate 105 years of the life of their great church. And they've asked me to come and share in the celebration of that anniversary, and it is with great joy that I've consented to be with my seminary colleague, the Reverend Dr. Eugene Diamond, as he gives leadership to that great church and has asked me to come and celebrate with them today. So be in prayer with me and for me as I'm away from you, but please know that you are in very good hands today. We have a phenomenal preaching staff at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, and every time I'm away and you have the opportunity to hear from them, I know you will be blessed. Today, as you can probably already tell, the Reverend Richard A. Boone IV is going to be our preacher for the day and how we thank God for him. He is our minister to youth and emerging adults. It used to be youth and college students. We've shifted that name now to include a broader scope of brothers and sisters to be included in emerging adults. And so we thank God for the ministry that the Reverend Boone has brought to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, beginning as an intern several years ago, but now continuing as our youth minister. And what a job he has done, a great job he has done to continue the work of so many who have come before him. Since I showed up at Wheeler Avenue in 1998, until this day, we have had eight youth ministers who have done their jobs well to ensure the progress and productivity of our young people. We remember the Reverend Warren A. Olu Chapman and the wonderful ways by which he helped young people to grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, thanking God for the advocacy that he had for young people. And in this line of succession, continuing with Dr. Dinkins and so many others, now until the Reverend Boone, we have seen how these youth ministers have shared with our young people and they have been the better as a consequence. And now this youth minister, the Reverend Boone, has expanded it all the more with youth church. And every second and fourth Sunday, they have two worship services with hundreds of young people attending. And we praise God for the work and the witness of this man of God named the Reverend Richard A. Boone and for the service that he renders to our church. He is indeed a true youth pastor shepherding these young people and making sure that their lives are better. He has a heart for them, and I thank God for him. So be blessed today by the ministry of the Reverend Boone and know uh, that as you leave from this place today, you will be the better because you came to church. Please know that our ministry to middle agers, the prime of life ministry, will meet next Saturday at 10 a.m. And I hope that you will be with the Reverend Medine Johnson as she gathers all of our prime of lifers together and shares with them in a very special worship service, 60 minutes of worship on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. And then thereafter, they will re, uh, regather to talk about how to move the ministry forward as we continue to see the work of the Prime of Life ministry unfold. I look forward to being in prayer with you Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. Bible study will take place thereafter. Prayer will be at 6 p.m. as well. And it's going to be a great week as we continue to experience the love and loyalty of the Lord Jesus Christ. Until we get back together again, the Lord bless you and keep you is my prayer. Amen. Amen. Listen, I want to move quickly through uh, this portion of worship. God is in this place, and we honor the presence of the Lord. Uh, we want you to be mindful that as we gear up for the celebration of our 62nd church anniversary on the first Sunday of June, uh, we have a number of events that will take place, a spring arts festival on May 4th, and a black party here on the campus on Friday, May 31st. Uh, in, in advance of that black party, we have uh, commemorative jerseys that each one of you can purchase on the website with your uh, name and the year you joined the church. Uh, so we want to uh, engage in that experience and we've made that available to you on the website. In order to get those shirts here by the 31st of May for the block party, we need you to go ahead and register uh, and purchase your shirt by uh, the 26th, I believe it is. Uh, go ahead and go on the website and by the 26th, go and purchase that shirt so that we can have them here by May 31st. Will you do that for us? 
Amen. Amen. If you don't know the year you joined, you can call the church and ask to speak to Shirley Wilkerson, and she can make that information available to you. It's offering time, and we celebrate the opportunity that is ours to give to a God who is so generously given to each of us. There are brothers and sisters in the aisles who have envelopes. If you desire to give via an envelope, uh, there are drop boxes around the campus where you can place those envelopes, give your tangible gifts. Others of us will give via digital means. You can give via push pay, text to give, via the QR code on the screen. However you choose to give, we just thank God for your continued generosity. Uh, because of your continued generosity, this church continues to experience the, the favor of God and the financial uh, stability that it does. And we thank God for that reality. We're likewise able to be of assistance to brothers and sisters every day of the week who come to this church in need because you have so generously given your gifts so that we can be of service to this community and to this congregation. So to God be the glory. We're going to consecrate these gifts in this magnificent ministry of music is going to bless us. And then we will be blessed by the preaching ministry of our minister to youth and emerging adults. Uh, the Reverend Richard A. Boone the Fourth. Let's pray and continue in worship. God, we love you and we thank you because you've been so good. We honor you because you have taken care of us. All we have needed, your hands have provided. You've been so faithful to us and we pray now that you would allow for us to be faithful in our stewardship that we might give so that you can continue to Bless these gifts for the utilization of your kingdom here on earth. We pray, O oh God, that no one would go lacking as a consequence of their giving, that you would return to them some 30, some 60, some 100 fold because they trust you with the tithe and bless you with the offering. We pray, O oh God, that you would bless each gift and each giver. And we thank you that the testimony of the old saints still rings true. We cannot beat God giving no matter how we try. So bless now this time of sharing and offering that you might be glorified through it. In Jesus' name we pray with great expectation. Amen.
worship God for being a protector, a keeper. Come on. Come on, you can worship him for being our sustainer, for being a faithful God, for God is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands 
just look back over your life began to worship God for being good to you for covering all of you I do want to, I want to get to our text today, but I want to honor our senior pastor in his absence, the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby. Can we give God praise for him? And keep those hands going for our past emeritus, Reverend Dr. William Alexander Lawson. Hallelujah. We give honor to our executive pastor, Reverend Dr. Alexander Johnson and to my friends and my family and my colleagues God bless you um, this is the first time uh, that you know I'm able to preach since being married so I do want to recognize my wife Mrs. Boone I want to recognize her alright you, you heard Reverend Johnson she read for us the gospel according to Mark chapter 1. She read verses 16 through 34. I want to look at verses 29 and 30. I want to read from the New International Version. The Bible says, As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they immediately told Jesus about her. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they immediately told Jesus about her. For our time together, my brothers and sisters, I want to talk about the need to intercede. The need to intercede. I don't know why, but for some odd reason, I took a trip down memory lane. I mean, I went way back. I began, I began to think about when I was a young boy, a young lad, and I was always in church. I'm a church baby. My dad was my pastor. And I was, I was able to participate in church. I was actually the drummer. I mean, you think that brother was good, but me, I was, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was good. I just began to think about church and my experience growing up and my favorite part of worship, now you may think it's weird, but it was the devotional service. We didn't have prelude, we didn't have the praise team. My favorite part of worship, I liked hearing the deacon sing songs like glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burdens down. Songs like can't nobody, yeah, you heard it, can't nobody, do me like the Lord. Songs like Jesus is on the main line. Tell them what, come on, you, you, you like that too. Songs like shine on me. Yeah, I, I like the devotional songs. I, I loved playing uh, during the devotional experience, but it was this one deacon. There's, there's always one. It, it was this one deacon Every time he got the mic, every time it was his chance to sing, he used to sing this same old song. Here's how the song went. My mama prayed for me, had me on her mind, 
took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed. I'm so glad she prayed for me. And then he used to say, my daddy prayed for me. Had me on his mind, took the time and prayed for me. Right when I thought he was done, he like, my grandma prayed for me, and my aunties prayed for me, and my dog prayed for me. I mean, every time it was his, his turn to do devotional, he, he sang the same old song. And I didn't understand as a kid. I didn't understand. I'm like, dude, surely you know other songs. Stop singing that song until I got older. When, when, I, when I started to experience some adversity and when I began to experience some hardships, I, I didn't understand at the time, but when I began to learn about intercessors and intercession, I realized that this deacon was testifying that the only reason he was able to make it is because somebody prayed for him. Oh, I get it now, Deke. He was trying to teach me. He was trying to teach us the importance of intercession and the influence of inter intercessors. And, and for those who may not know what intercessor, who intercessors are, for those who might not know about intercession, let me help you. Uh, uh, intercessors are individuals who intervene on behalf of others. Intercessors are those who are selfless enough to plead and pray and stand in the gap to go between God and another person and and become a mediator that, that that's what an intercessor does that that person is a middleman or a middle woman and they stand in the gap on behalf of someone else and I believe my brothers and sisters that those of us who profess to be believers should be intercessors as a matter of fact every day the Lord wakes us up to brand new mercies is there any Anybody in here grateful uh, for brand new mercies? Every day the Lord wakes us up to brand new mercies. Every day the Lord sees fit for us to live is a great day to intervene on behalf of others. It's the perfect opportunity to stand in the gap and go to God and plead, pray, and petition for others even when we need God to meet our needs just in case you missed it can I say it again every day the Lord wakes you up every day your feet hits the, hits the ground you ought to just pray for somebody else other than yourself it's the perfect opportunity to stand in the gap and, and pray for somebody else it's the perfect opportunity to let your request be made known even when you need God to do something for you let, let, let me say it like this. Intercessors selflessly pray to God for others, trusting in divine intervention for their neighbor. Intercessors are selfless enough to pray to God for others, believing for their neighbor as they, as they would for themselves. Intercessory prayer builds community and solidarity, promoting empathy and compassion. That's why German Lutheran pastor and theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer once said a Christian community either lives by the intercessory prayers for one another or the community will be destroyed. In other words, my brothers and sisters, intercession is necessary for the believer. And I like what Dietrich said because his statement reminds us that we as believers of Christ, if you believe in the power of God, if you believe in the power of the Holy Ghost, you should be willing to intercede on behalf of another person. One, one writer says it like this, no place 
is closed to intercessory prayer. No continent, no nation, no city, no organization, no office, no power on earth can keep intercession out. Intercessory prayer might be defined as loving our neighbor on our knees. And hear me, my brothers and sisters, no matter where we are, we serve a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. Can I prove it to you? In Exodus chapter 32, Moses intercedes. He he stood in the gap twice on behalf of the children of Israel. God was ready to destroy the people because of idolatry. God tells Moses, look, I'm going to get rid of them and turn you into a great nation. And Moses could have said cool he he could have been selfish but he was selfless and Moses decided to intercede on behalf of the people that's in the Old Testament can I give you one in the new in Acts chapter 12 Peter was in prison and he was chained to soldiers and the Bible says that the church earnestly prayed for him And as a consequence of their prayers, the angel popped up on Peter and said, come on, man, let's go. It's time to get out of here. And Peter, because he was chained to soldiers by the fact that they prayed, them chains popped off of him and he was free. Let me give you another one. I think y'all are like this one. In Luke chapter 22, Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat, but I prayed for you that your faith may not fail and when you have turned back strengthening your brothers hear me when I tell you my brothers and sisters we must be willing to pray on behalf of others if Jesus prayed how much more praying we should do And our text demonstrates that when we pause to intercede, when we pause to intervene and pray for others, if it's in God's will, God will act and change the situation. Now, the story of Peter's mother-in-law is in the, the Gospels according to Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And when you read Matthew's account, Matthew tells the story. He, he mentions that Peter's mother-in-law was lying in bed with a fever. But then he skipped to Jesus healing her. I, I like that because he puts all the attention on, on Jesus. I, I like that because he reminds us that when you, when, 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 if you are sick, Jesus can heal you. He, he reminds us that Jesus can still turn things around. But when you read Mark and Luke's account, they mention something that Matthew did not include. In Mark and Luke, they mention that Peter's mother-in-law had a fever and they told Jesus about her. Do you, do you see the difference? In Matthew, she, he mentions that she was sick, but he skips the, the prayer and says, oh, she was healed. But I like Mark and Luke because Luke says and Mark says that they told Jesus about her, which means we are responsible to pray for somebody else. I, I know we like to testify, oh, I'm healed and I'm delivered, but can I tell you that somebody prayed for you? Somebody had you on the their mind took the time and prayed for you and you ought to just give God praise for the prayer warriors in your life give God praise for the intercessors in your life I know you look good but somebody prayed for you I I know you you have a good resume and that great job but somebody prayed for you I know you're healed now I'm trying to tell you somebody prayed for you I know you got a little money in your pocket but I'm just trying to tell you somebody took the time out of their busy schedule and prayed for you. This, this, this small detail in the text made me reflect on the importance of interceding on behalf of others. And, and when we get to our text today, I want to just give you three things because whenever we live in this world, I want you to understand that there's always a need to intercede. And the text teaches us that there is a need to intercede because, number one, the consistency of suffering. The consistency of suffering. 
The text says in verse 30, Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever. The gospel, according to Luke, writes she was suffering from high fever. Luke was a physician, so he gives us more detail. And, and this isn't some ordinary fever. You, you can't just take some aspirin and go to bed. You, 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 you can't just take a ibuprofen and go to bed. No, she was seriously ill. This, this fever, this fire, she was in pain. And the Bible says she was suffering from a fever. And you have to understand that the word fever in the Greek literally means to be oppressed. That, that she was oppressed with a fever. She was seized by illness. She was afflicted that the illness gripped her and wouldn't let her go. She was oppressed, hard pressed, suffering in pain, seriously sick, and she could not do anything about it. And I don't know when she started suffering. I'm not sure if she went to bed and she woke up suffering. I'm not sure if she if she suffered before she went to sleep. The only thing the text tells us is that she was suffering. And my brothers and sisters, this is why we have to be nice to people. This, this is why we have to smile. This is why we have to speak to people and ask them, hey, are you all right? This is why we can't just rush to our seats to, and run somebody over because you never know what your neighbor is going through. We don't know how long. We don't know when or what they are suffering from. But I'm trying to tell you, as long as we have breath in our bodies, as long as we are on this side of heaven, and heaven suffering is inevitable and, and I know your neighbor look good they smell good but and, and they may not uh, look like what they're going through but the truth of the matter is that some people have to press their way to church some people have to press their way to work they're trying to keep it all together but let's just be honest people suffer that's why, my brothers and sisters, we have to pray because suffering is inevitable and we all experience some kind of suffering, some more than others. But if you think that you are the only one dealing with some trials and tribulations, I need you to think again because suffering is a shared human experience. Right when you think you're the only one facing difficulties, right when you think you're the only one facing some challenges, there's always somebody else enduring their own suffering. Let me show you the text because she, was, she wasn't the only one suffering. But before they get to the house, they were in the synagogue. Jesus, the Bible says, healed a man who was possessed by an evil spirit. He was suffering because of this evil spirit. This evil spirit took over his body. The evil spirit oppressed him and tormented his body, tormented his mind. In verse 23, it says that, that the, demon possessed, the demon possessed this man. And I don't know how long he was possessed. I don't know when it happened. Only, the only thing we know is that he was suffering. And maybe, just maybe, while he was suffering from this demonic spirit, Spirit, Simon's mother-in-law could have been suffering from this high fever. Can you see the consistency of suffering that people consistently suffer? Suffer because of racism, suffering because of sexism, suffering because of discrimination, suffering because of social injustice. People suffer, suffer because of health issues, suffer because of relationship problems. Some people suffer because they have, they, they have lost a loved one. People suffer. Some people don't have enough money to pay their bills. People suffer economic hardship, job loss, debt, lack of resources. I'm just trying to tell you, people suffer mental health challenges and anxiety and depression and grief. It's Stress Awareness Month and some people are stressed out, stressed out on their job, stressed out at their in their homes. I'm just trying to tell you, people suffer and this is why we have to pray. This is why we have to intercede on behalf of others because people suffer and my brothers and sisters if we believe in God it should it should compel us to pray on behalf of somebody else I know you pray but here's my question can you pray for somebody else
else other than yourself. I know you pray for your kids, because, but can you pray for your neighbor's kids? I, I know you pray for your relationship, but can you pray for their relationship? I know you pray for your finances, but can you pray for their finances? I know you pray for your career, but can you pray for their career? I know you pray for your community, but can you pray for their community? Can you pray for their health? Can you pray for their mind? I'm just trying to tell you that God is so big, God is able to fix your situation and their situation at the same time. There's a need to intercede. And, and this is why, my brothers and sisters, we pray every Wednesday morning. Because we believe that prayer still works. This is why we pray every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Because we believe prayer still works. This is why we had a drive through prayer. Because we believe prayer still works. This is why we gathered around Pastor Lawson. Because we believe prayer still works. I'm just trying to tell you when we pray, God will step in. Who God? And turn things around. The Bible says the effectual fervent uh, uh, prayers of the righteous it availeth much and I just want to survey the cathedral and if there's some people in overflow and ask this question are you praying for other people do you still believe in the power of God when you pray do you believe that God is still able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think I'm just trying to tell you that every day you wake up in the morning you ought to, you ought to be compelled to pray for somebody else So we have to pray because of the consistency of suffering, but I don't want to leave you with just suffering. We, we also have to pray because of our connection to the Savior. Um, because being connected to Jesus should inspire a deep need to pray for others. Let me show you. The Bible says, verse 16, as Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen. The Bible shows us in verse 16 that Jesus called Simon and his brother to follow him and they decided to drop their nets. They were fishermen. They fished for a living. That's how they put dinner on the table because they were professional fishermen and the Bible says that Jesus saw them. Now you have to understand that this word see means more than to just look, but it means to perceive, it means to notice, it means to recognize. And some scholars suggest that because Jesus was fully God and Jesus was fully human, hypostatic union is the theological uh, term. They, they believe that Jesus did more than just see with his eyes. They, they suggest that because Jesus was fully human and fully divine, that Jesus Jesus had a Jesus uh, look and had a deeper insight into their future when he saw them that he didn't just see them and look at them but he saw their potential I like that my brothers and sisters because that lets me know that Jesus sees me that I may not dot every I I may not cross every T but Jesus sees me I may not be what I what I what I want to be but yet Jesus still calls me and he gives me purpose purpose because he knows the plans that he has for me. I, I just wish I had somebody in here who can just give God praise that you serve a seeing savior. You don't, you don't always do right, but he sees you and he calls you anyway. You don't always sing glory, glory, hallelujah, but he sees you and he calls you. You don't always speak to people and smile at people, but he sees you and he calls you. And I want to let you know that you have a purpose. Stop caring about what other people think about you and just give God praise that he sees you. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have it all together. Your God sees you. You may not have money right now but he sees you. Can you just give God praise for looking at you and seeing you and seeing your potential? I know the song says please be patient with me but you ought to tell yourself that. Please be patient with yourself because God is not through with you yet so he sees them 
He caused them, and as a consequence, they followed Jesus. You have to understand that this, this word follow means more th than just to walk behind. This word follow means to pursue. It means to attend to. It means to accompany, which means that they were always right by Jesus' side. They were students of Christ. They were personal followers. Something about that man named Jesus made them follow him and when they followed him they decided to live life and life more abundantly when they followed him they decided to connect themselves to Christ and as a consequence of their connection they were able to talk to Jesus and they were able to walk with Jesus and they were able to get to know Jesus and experience the Savior for themselves and I just want to ask somebody are you connected to Jesus is there anybody in here who can tell Testify. Ever since I dropped my net and decided to follow Jesus, my life has been better. Ever since I decided to follow Jesus and leave some people and leave some places behind, my life is better. Ever since I decided to become a disciple, I've watched him heal. I've watched him make ways. I've watched him open doors. I've watched him do amazing things. I've watched him uh, 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 feed me. I've watched him take my two fish and five five loaves of bread and give me overflow. I've watched him open the Red Sea in my life. Who am I here talking to who can testify I am a disciple of Christ? Do I have any saints, some senior saints in here who can testify I once was young, but now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Do, do I have any young people in here who can testify I ain't been living that long, but for the years I've been around, I've watched him do some things. I've watched him do what I can and I don't mind connecting myself to Jesus I'm glad I'm hooked up with Jesus because my life is better I'm glad I hooked up with Jesus because my mind is better I'm glad I hooked up with Jesus because my family is better the Bible says if you abide in me and my word abides in you you can ask for whatever you want and I give it to you somebody ought to give God praise that you are connected to to the Savior, connected to the healer, connected to the one who can heal you and deliver you and make way. Somebody shout, I'm connected. And I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but I'm at the point of my life now, I, I need to connect with some people who still believe in the power of God. You ought to just survey your circle and make sure you have some people who still believe many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us from them all. You better make sure you are connected with some people who still believe that God is our refuge and the very present help in the time of trouble. You better make sure you're connected with some people who still believe God is a miracle worker. Woo. You better make sure you're connected with some people who still believe God is light and darkness. I know that's your boy. I know that's your girl, but can they pray? Because when times get rough, you better be connected to some people who can believe that we were he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. You better connect with some people who still believe God is still able to do the impossible. You got to make sure you connect yourself with somebody who believes that God can do anything but fail. And you ought to just look at somebody and tell them, I'm connected. You better hook up with me because I know how to get a prayer through. I didn't go to seminary, but I know how to get a prayer through. I may not pray like them, but I know how to get a prayer through. I don't own a clergy collar, but I know how to get a prayer through. I may not speak in tongue, but I know how to get a prayer through because I'm connected. Connected, and I've watched him make ways. I've watched him open doors. I've watched him regulate minds. I'm connected, and you better hook up with me because I know how to get a prayer through. Come on, you ought to give God praise for your connection. Woo. I'm trying to tell you when hell breaks loose in your life, you need to be connected to people who still believe God. You better connect yourself with some people who believe God can perform miracles, signs, and wonders.
thunders. I wish I had somebody here who can testify that I'm so connected. I'm hooked up with the Holy One and I don't mind praying on your behalf because I know God can turn things around. Yeah. Oh my God. You gotta connect with some people who will text you and say, you doing all right? I've been thinking about you. I'm praying for you. Because they were connected to Jesus. They were able to watch him heal. As a consequence of their connection they didn't mind telling Jesus immediately about Peter's mother-in-law. I, I want to tell you this, that there's a need to intercede because of the consistency of suffering. There's also a need to intercede because of our connection to the Savior. I'm done when I tell you there's a need to intercede because of our confidence in his sufficiency. Watch the text. The Bible says that they leave the synagogue. They go to Simon and Andrew's house. And when they see Peter's mother-in-law sick, they immediately tell Jesus about her. Um, notice they didn't tell him how to heal. Notice they didn't tell him what to do. The Bible says they just tell him about her. I, I like this because they were confident in what Jesus was able to do. Mark says that Jesus took her by the hand and helped her up. After they told Jesus, he, he took her by the hand and helped her up. Luke said that he bent her over and rebuked the fever. In other words, he leaned into the situation and rebuke and the fever left. Matthew said that he touched her and the fever left her. I don't know what happened. I don't know if he touched her. I don't know if he bent over. I don't know if he lifted her up. All I know is she got up. And I just wish I had somebody in here who can testify. Any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Is there anybody in here who can testify? I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know when he's going to do it. But I know whatever he decides to do, that it's already done. I'm closing when I tell you that Jesus can fix it. I'm closing when I tell you that Jesus can turn it around. I'm telling you that Jesus is able to do the impossible. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know when he's going to do it. But I believe that his power is still sufficient. His grace is still sufficient. His mercy is still sufficient. And you ought to just give God praise that Jesus can do what you need him to do. Whatever you need, Jesus can do it that it's enough to get the job done. So I'm going to leave you when I tell you to keep praying until times get better. Keep praying until bodies are healed. Keep praying until minds are regulated. Keep praying until they feel better. Keep praying until they get the money. Keep praying until their marriage is better. There's a need to intercede because of the consistency of suffering. You never know what your neighbor is going through. But if you believe in the power of God, you ought to open up your mouth and pray for somebody. There's a need to intercede because of your connection. Somebody ought to testify. I've seen him do it. I've seen him heal. I've seen 
him make ways and I've seen him open doors and I'm so confident that whatever Jesus does it's enough to get the job done you ought to be confident in his sufficiency keep praying until they come back to church keep praying until they get better keep praying until they start serving I'm just trying to tell somebody prayer still works look at somebody tell them prayer still works look at somebody tell them intercession still works look at somebody and tell them I'll pray for you you pray for me and we gonna watch God change things tell your neighbor prayer Still, still works. Prayer still works. I wish I had somebody who can help me close and give God praise because He is a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God. Somebody ought to testify. I'm a living witness. Could have been dead. Sleeping in my grave Will somebody pray for me I'm able to move Dancing in my feet Because somebody prayed for me My mind is better Depression didn't take me out Suicidal thoughts didn't take me out Because somebody prayed for me Had me on their mind Took the time And prayed for me I'm so glad I'm so glad are you glad uh, that somebody prayed uh, and had a little talk with Jesus uh, told him all about your troubles uh, and you are here oh God, to give him glory uh, open up your mouth uh, and bless his name uh, open up your mouth uh, because God is worthy uh, tell somebody uh, I pray for you uh, you pray for me uh, and we gonna watch God uh, turn it around Pray, yeah, oh God, pray, I pray for you, and we gonna watch God change things, pray, pray for me, I pray for you, we gonna watch God change things, watch God heal bodies, watch God regulate minds, won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he heal you? Won't he deliver you? Show yes! 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 I got strength because somebody prayed. I'm alive because somebody prayed. I'm better because somebody prayed. Give him glory. Bless his name. Won't he do it? Won't he hold you? Keep praying until your family gets back together. Keep praying until your children accept Christ. Keep praying until the world gets better. God can and he will won't he do it the bible says that people began to bring the sick to Jesus and he healed many I don't know who you need to bring to this altar. I, I don't know who you need to pray about, but I'm trying to tell you, when you pray, Jesus would do what you need Jesus to do. I'm trying to tell you, when you pray, things will turn around. You don't have to live in depression. You don't have to live like that. God will turn it around when you pray. 
just trying to tell somebody that there's a need to intercede. And if you believe in the power of God, you ought to just give God praise. Come on, if you believe that he's still able to wipe every tear from their eyes, you ought to give God praise. If you still believe that the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run in and are safe, you ought to give God praise. Intercession still works. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you help me give God praise for this message and this messenger? Thank God for the Reverend Richard Boone IV on this Sunday. Listen, listen. When you have that much powerful preaching about prayer, it's only fitting to pray. Uh, so so uh, do me a favor, do your neighbor a favor. Make sure you get one person's name nearest you. Get a name and ask them, well, how can I pray for you? Go ahead now and, and ask that person, how can I pray for you? Get out of your comfort zone if you have to. How can I pray for you? How can I pray for you? And then go ahead and pray for him. Pray for him. Pray for him. Let's practice intercession. Let's practice intercession. Pray for that neighbor. Pray for that neighbor. Pray for that neighbor. God, in the name of Jesus, we come thanking you that you're working things out in our neighbor's life. We come thanking you that you are at work even now meeting the needs of our neighbors. We come thanking you that you are healing our neighbor, that you are restoring the joy of our neighbor, that you are fixing the mind of our neighbor, that you are putting resources where they need to be in the life of our neighbor, that you are mending broken hearts for our neighbor. God, in the name of Jesus, we come thanking you that you're destroying yokes for our neighbor, that you are relieving burdens for our neighbor, that you are restoring as only you can and delivering as only you can and saving and setting free in our neighbor's life. God, God, we trust that you are opening doors that our neighbor has been trying to get through or closing doors that need to be closed in our neighbor's life. We thank you for the ways you're going to make for our neighbor. We thank you, oh God, because you're in the neighborhood. We can shout because we know that you are near and you are present and you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask, think, or imagine. And we won't wait until we see you do it. We'll shout right now because we know that you are able to do anything but fail. God, we trust you to work things out for our neighbor. We celebrate what you're doing in someone else's life. And we thank you for it. We trust you to do it. We honor you. We love you. We adore you. We worship you your way in our neighbor's life is our prayer in Jesus name in the name at which demons still tremble in the name that's above every name we seal this prayer in the most high and holy and sacred and sanctified name of the one who heals and sets free and delivers in the name of Jesus we pray with great expectation great thanksgiving amen Amen. If you believe God's going to do something great in your neighbor's life, give great praise to our great God on someone else's behalf. Church leaders are going to come and stand with me. Listen, I'm inviting someone to get in connection with and to this God about whom the Reverend Boone has so powerfully preached. I invite you to come join the Jewers here. Join these other leaders. 
Give your life to the Lord. Get connected to our Christ and our Creator. If you're here and you are unsaved, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord, as your Savior, this is your opportunity. This is your time. This is your moment. Come this way. We want to celebrate what God is doing in your life. If you're here and you need a church family, you've been, you've been a professional visitor at Wheeler Avenue. You've been coming here, but you've never made it official. This is your day. This is your opportunity. Come on. We want you to come this way. We're going to celebrate with you as you do. If you're here and you need to get connected with a church family while you're in the Houston area, we have what's called Watch Care. We'll watch over you, we'll care for you, or whatever your reality is, we want to celebrate the decision that you're making this day. Come on, celebrate as they come, even from the balcony. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. This is your time. This is your moment. This is your opportunity. If you're able to stand, I invite you to stand with me. Make it easy for someone to slip out of that pew and come this way and experience all that God has in store for them. God bless you, our brother. God bless you, our brother. Amen. God bless you, our sister. This is your moment. They've already come. Come join them if you know you need to be at this altar. And we're going to watch God change things. God bless you, brothers. Amen. God bless you, my sisters. You prayed for me. And we watched God change things. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. And watch God. Watch God change things. for that neighbor. You know that neighbor well. That's your sister. That's your brother. And you need to check with them. Ask them. Ask them. Do we need to be down there? Can I walk with you? This is your moment. Is this your time? Is the pastor waiting on you? Are you growing where you're going? Come on. Ask them. Ask them. Say, I'll walk with you. I can't walk for you, but I can walk with you. If you know you need to be down here, join these who have already come. We want to celebrate with you. We want to celebrate with you. Don't put it off for another day. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Don't procrastinate. Don't vacillate. Don't oscillate. This is your day. Come on. We want to celebrate with what God is doing in your life. Come on. Even from the balcony, we honor your presence and your walking. We celebrate with you. We celebrate with you. We celebrate with you. Come on. One more time. I pray for you. You pray for me. And we watch God change things, change things, change things. Hallelujah. Look at God changing things, changing things. Changing circumstances, changing situations, changing positions. celebrate these who have come. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. To you, my sisters, my brothers, on behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby, our founding pastor and the entirety of the church family known as Wheeler Avenue, welcome to the family. We're excited about the decision that you have made this day. Listen, selfishly, they're still coming and we thank God for them. Amen. I will admit to you, very selfishly, we thank God that you joined this church because we believe that because of your 
gifts, your graces, you're going to make this an even better congregation and church family. But we likewise thank God for your joining because we believe and trust that you will be made better and enriched and enhanced as a consequence of the decision that you have made this day. We are excited about your presence this day and we can prove it to you right now. Church family, help me thank God for the decision that they have made to join with us. Listen, I invite each of you to follow Deacon Jewer to my left, to your right. He's going to help you get more information about our new member profit, uh, process. And we honor your walking. We honor your movement. We honor your decision this day. Church family, one more time. Celebrate our new family. While you're celebrating, thank God one more time for our minister of youth and emerging adults, the Reverend Richard A. Boone IV. Powerful word of God on this day. God be praised. God be praised. He has challenged each of us to ensure that every day we make it our responsibility and our regimen to pray for someone else. Let's make sure we do that and do it with consistency. Amen. Amen. We're preparing to leave from this place. As we leave from this place, let's do so. Praising God from whom all blessings flow. Bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give to you his peace. You're going out and you're coming in, your labor and in your leisure, your joy as well as in your sorrow, in your laughter and in your tears until that day when we meet the Lord face to face. My sisters, my brothers, go in peace. Go in love, go in joy, go pray for someone else. And may the peace, love, and joy of our God go with you now, henceforth, and forevermore as we all sing together.